I'm Esther Martinez. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. What I think is really sexy about public transit is that it's anonymous and uh, full of strangers and people get on and people get off. I, I'm actually a really big supporter of public transportation and mass transit. Um, I recently had a very uneventful ride on the Metro Rail and um, still though, if you see me on the train, you should probably keep your hands out of your pockets. My 17 year old sister told me the other day that she wants to start riding the public bus. I said, are you crazy? Public transit is full of perverts. <laughs> I know, because when I was 17, I rode the public bus. I was on a northbound S when I felt someone touching my hair. I thought the jerk behind me must have his hand on my seat back. So I turned to face the window to see if I could make out what was going on in the reflection. It was an older man. I couldn't see a hand, but I could see what looked like a hand, making rhythmic up and down motions. I quickly look forward. Was he? Oh my God, I thought, what kind of pervert am I to even think that? I must have one sick mind. <laughs> Obviously, this guy is not jerking off on a half full bus in plain daylight. So to prove it to myself, I spun around and looked straight at him and at his penis. <laughs> Some people never forget a face. <laughs> it had one eye. <laughs> Holy shit. He's been pulling his pud and my hair. <laughs> the bus had stopped at a red light. Heart pounding, I raced to the front of the bus and whispered to the bus driver, there's a man back there masturbating. The driver looked in his rear view mirror and I turned just in time to watch the pervert push open the back doors and scramble off the bus. The driver said, oh, him again. It's a sick feeling to realize you've been unwittingly involved in a sex act with a stranger. I felt vulnerable, violated, to know I was sitting there, the object of some twisted fantasy with the sicko behind me the whole time. Months later, I was back on the S bus with my friend Miriam. It was packed. People crammed in, holding on to the grip bars, elbows and shopping bags shoved into the faces of those lucky enough to have seats. Miriam was by the window. I was in the aisle seat. Every time the bus came to a stop, the guy behind me in the aisle rammed into my shoulder. Without looking, I said, excuse you. But when the bus started moving again, so did he. Except now it wasn't on and off poking, it was full on rubbing. I turned all the way around and started to say something when I saw the man's face. It was, oh, him again. <laughs> I know who you are, I said, standing up, but the man quickly pushed his way through the crowded bus to the back doors, turning to smile at me the whole time. Why does this keep happening to me, I asked Miriam. What's wrong with me? A few years later, I was on the Metro Rail reading a book. <laughs> I am cursed with extraordinary peripheral vision. <laughs> From the corner of my eye, I detected some spastic movement across the aisle. <laughs> I closed my eyes. Don't look, don't look, don't look. I looked. With pants undone, there was this other guy tickling his Elmo in public. 
For a second, I was paralyzed by fear. Then I ran toward three women seated toward the other end of the car. They were older women, small and matronly and Spanish. I started crying and told them everything. They nodded their heads together in disgust. One of them said, sin vergüenza. <laughs> Shameless. And something about this word burned me. She was right. Why should I feel dirty? I swear, I told those women, the next time a, a man violates me like that, I'm gonna make sure he feels ashamed. It would be years before my shot at redemption. <laughs> in 2005, I was living in Manhattan, mass transit capital of the world. I rode the train daily and was unfazed by the colorful cast of subway characters, break dancers and mariachis, urine-soaked bums and beggars who sing a cappella. Almost a decade since I'd watched the man show off his handiwork. No one had bothered me. Then I saw him. The sweaty creep right across from me, staring at my chest. His hands were buried deep in the pockets of his white jacket, moving around in there like he was jingling loose change. <laughs> this was August in New York. I was in shorts and a tank top, and this guy's wearing a windbreaker. As the train sped past local stops, his pockets became more and more animated. I looked around the train car. People were reading papers, listening to their iPods, staring off into space. Was I the only one who had noticed? I stared right at the guy and gave him a look like, what do you think you're doing? He smiled. And that was it. I stood up, pointed at the man, and shouted to the whole train, that guy's masturbating! <laughs> and everyone looked at him. You're crazy, the man said. He sprung out of his seat. He pulled his hands out of his pockets, and he walked to the door. As the train slowed to a stop, the man pointed at me and said, you're a pervert. <laughs> he got off the train. Everyone looked at me. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm a pervert. You guys saw what was happening, right? I mean, his hands going to town inside his pockets, right? And the windbreaker, who wears a windbreaker in this heat? The woman sitting next to me relocated. <laughs> These trains, I laughed, I laughed nervously. <laughs> They're full of weirdos. <laughs> no one said anything. I felt entirely naked. By the time I reached my stop, I was no longer sure of my own perception. Maybe the man hadn't been doing what I thought after all. Maybe I did just have a sick mind. I stepped off the train and thought, God, I really hope that guy was masturbating. 